Hi, Dr. H here. This lesson is going to go over the four important biological molecules found in every cell. And those four, uh, three of them are the also known as the major food nutrients. So we have protein up here, shown by the uh, various meat products, uh, carbohydrates down here, all the breads, pastas, grains, things like that, and fats and lipids. So uh, we have the stick of butter here. Uh, the one biomolecule which is not really a food uh, molecule, a, source of, a major source of calories for living things are the nucleic acids, uh, DNA, RNA. So before we start talking about the specific molecules, uh, just some general characteristics uh, that apply to all four of them. Uh, important thing to remember is that all of these molecules uh, in one way or another are polymers, which uh, poly means many. A polymer is just a collection of a bunch of smaller bits all put together. Okay, and those smaller bits are called monomers. Uh, mono meaning one. So there's two chemical reactions involved here. Uh, the first one here is a condensation reaction. Okay, and the condensation reactions put monomers together to form a polymer. So here we have two general monomers, monomer one, monomer two, and they are linked together into this, uh, this polymer. Here it's only a polymer of two, two molecules. During the reaction, you see two hydrogens and one oxygen come off, and those will bond together during the reaction, and they form water. So an easy way to remember condensation reaction I think what condensation is, that's water coming out of the air and settling on things. So in this condensation reaction, we have water coming out, and that is one of the waste products of the reaction. The other important general chemical reaction is uh, the exact opposite, and that's taking the polymers apart into their component monomers, and that is called a hydrolysis reaction. Um, and here, it's the exact opposite of the condensation reaction. Here, we take a water molecule and we sort of add it, we call it adding it across a bond, it's sort of an organic chemistry term. Uh, but this water molecule, along with an enzyme, functions to break this, uh, in this case, it's breaking this bond right here, break that bond apart, and this water molecule gets used up, and now the polymer here is one shorter. Okay, this is a very important reaction uh, in digestion. Okay, when we break our food molecules down, okay, we break our proteins, our fats, our carbohydrates down into the monomers so that we can absorb them into, into our bodies. So the first class of molecules we're going to talk about are the carbohydrates. Okay, some very important things to remember about all of these uh, molecules is one, you need to know what are the monomers. Okay, so for carbohydrates, the monomer is a monosaccharide. Okay, it's kind of easy to remember because it has the term mono in it. Okay, one single sugar, okay, mono meaning one, saccharide. Uh, a couple structures here, uh, you can see carbohydrates listed either as a straight chain here. Uh, most oftenly in solution though, they form this ring structure here. This, is, this here is a six uh, carbon sugar. Uh, you see the six carbons. Each of these little corners here represents a carbon atom. They don't show uh, all the carbons in this structure. Uh, when you have two sugars put together, you have what's called a disaccharide, a di meaning two. Common table sugar, which I believe this, yes, this is common table sugar, sucrose. This is a disaccharide. And then there are also polysaccharides, where you have lots and lots of monosaccharide monomers all linked together. Uh, they can be in a straight chain, or they can be branched. Okay, this uh, particular one here is a straight chain. You can see 300 to 600 uh, 
monomers here. So it's a very, very large molecule. Um, so what are these molecules used for in the cell? Carbohydrates have two major uses. One is energy. Okay, uh, if you think about sugar, okay, if you eat a whole lot of sugar, like you eat three candy bars uh, first thing in the morning, you're going to have a lot of energy. Uh, but it's not real long-lasting energy. You know, everybody talks about the sugar high and then the crash. Okay, sugar is very, very quick-burning energy. Okay, you eat it, you use it, it's gone. It doesn't last very long. Um, polysaccharides are uh, used for energy storage. Okay, very, very short-term and sort of inefficient energy storage, um, such as uh, starch. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and there also there are some structural uh, polysaccharides. Okay, uh, here's some a couple examples of a, a couple polysaccharides. Uh, starch here, as I just said, and this is the one that was on the last slide. Uh, this is a storage polysaccharide. Okay, the plants uh, take all of their extra glucose molecules. Okay, each of these monomers shares glucose, links them together in this big chain and stores them as starch. Um, and then when the plant needs a little energy, say it's uh, getting late fall, so there's not a whole lot of sun anymore, they need some more energy, they can't do photosynthesis as well, they can take those starch molecules, break them down, and release the glucose molecules and get a little bit of energy. Uh, this one down here, cellulose, this is an example of a structural polysaccharide. Okay, cellulose is the one of the major components of plant cell walls and it's what makes wood basically a uh, very interesting thing about these two structures um, if you look closely you'll notice that they are very very similar uh, they're both made up of straight chain uh, repeating glucose subunits the only difference between these three molecules is the way or these two molecules sorry is the way the glucose molecules are linked together. Okay? The geometry across the bond, uh, across the two molecules is a little bit different. It's very, it seems like a very subtle difference, but it's very, very important to uh, what we can use as food. Okay? We can eat starch. Okay? We can eat potatoes. We can eat bread. We can eat pasta. We can't eat wood. Okay? You cannot digest this molecule. If you eat, if you go out, you know, you start eating paper for some reason or eating sticks, it's not going to give you any extra energy. It's not going to give you any calories because our enzymes in our digestive tract cannot break this bond apart to release the glucose. But it can, our bodies can break down this bond. Very subtle difference, but it kind of shows how important the specificity of the enzymes are. All right, so that's carbohydrates. Monomers are monosaccharides, quick energy, energy storage, and structure. Okay, next molecule, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this one because we have chapters and chapters about these in the future. Uh, these are the nucleic acids, okay, um, DNA and RNA. Okay, the monomer for the nucleic acid is the nucleotide. Okay, and every nucleotide has three parts, okay, as shown here. Uh, they have a sugar, usually a pento sugar, meaning that it has five carbon atoms, okay, pent, like pentagon, five, okay, five carbons. There is a base, one of these five standard bases here, uh, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, those are the four found in DNA, and then in RNA, uracil, takes the place of thymine. And then the third part of the nucleotide are the phosphate groups. Okay, and there can be one, two, or three phosphate groups, depending on if it's a monophosphate, diphosphate, or triphosphate. Okay, that just refers to the number of phosphate groups attached here to the five prime uh, carbon of the pento sugar. Okay, so these get linked together through the condensation reactions into polymers. Okay, here is an example of a DNA polymer. Okay, this is uh, DNA, of course, has the double-stranded uh, DNA helix, uh, double helix structure. 
Um, so you can see this, the individual monomers here all linked together in a chain. So like I said, we're not going to talk a whole lot about this. Um, obviously, the most important function of nucleic acids is the information system, okay? information storage and information retrieval. Okay? And we'll talk much more about those two things uh, in the genetics unit. One other uh, mo molecule I should uh, call your attention to here in the nucleic acids uh, section is ATP, okay? adenosine triphosphate. Okay, this is a nucleotide, okay, triphosphate, uh, but this molecule also serves another purpose, and that is the main energy molecule, so to speak, of the cell. Okay, whenever the cell has to do some work, has to use some energy, this is the molecule that is used. Okay, and we will talk about exactly how that is done uh, in the energy unit. Okay, so nucleic acids, nucleotides, and uh, the monomers, information is the function. All right, next one is protein. Proteins is a big one, okay? Proteins, uh, as far as the function, they do pretty much everything in the cell, okay? They're enzymes, so they, do, they, they catalyze reactions. Uh, they are structural, okay? They hold the cell in place. They make other proteins, okay? They regulate things. They're involved in moving molecules around. So they do the bulk of the work of the cell is done by the proteins. Okay, the monomers for proteins are called nucleic acids, or I'm sorry, amino acids, not nucleic acids, amino acids. Uh, this is a generalized structure of an amino acid. Hopefully you should recognize a couple of the functional groups. Okay, here's a uh, amino group. That's where it gets the first part of its name, the amino part. And then over here is the carboxylic acid group. Okay, so that's where it's the acid part of its name. Okay, amino and acid. This R here stands for, actually I don't remember what it stands for, but it's um, R in organic chemistry represents something that can change in different molecules. Okay, so the R group is different in each of the 20 uh, commonly used amino acids, okay? and that R group will have different properties. Uh, if you look in the textbook, they will have that. I think they have a, a figure of all 20 commonly used amino acids. You certainly don't have to memorize any of the structures, uh, but what you should be aware of is that there are different types of amino acids. Okay, there are there are acidic amino acids, there are basic amino acids, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, all different types, and those properties of the R group is really what gives the protein its shape, and its shape then dictates its function. Okay, and here, uh, this is just a, a picture of a condensation reaction occurring between two amino acids. Okay, amino acid one here, amino acid two. They come together, form this, uh, what is called a peptide bond. Okay, that's just very simply a bond that holds two adjacent amino acids together. And here we have the water molecule coming out because it is a condensation reaction. That means water comes out. Okay, protein structure. Very, very complex structure in proteins. Okay, and their structure is really what determines their function. Okay, and there are four levels of protein structure that we can talk about. Uh, the first level, uh, the primary structure here, is just the sequence of amino acids. Which amino acids are there and in, and in what order? Okay, that's the primary structure. The secondary structure, the next level of structure, is how do those strands, that chain of amino acids, how does that wrap around itself in a single, you know, one single strand? And there are two basic secondary structure uh, motifs, so to speak. Uh, one is what's called an alpha helix, and that is what we see a lot of in this protein right here. Okay, these sort of twisty things here. These, these are alpha helices where the protein strand is kind of wrapped around itself in a spiral. Okay, the other, uh, which uh, does not appear really in this protein structure, is called a beta sheet or a beta fold. And that is more flat, planar uh, strands, and they, they usually run kind of parallel to each other. Okay, or a and so those are the two secondary structures. Now, that secondary 
structure, the alpha helices and the beta sheets will fold around themselves also to give what's called the tertiary structure. Okay, and this is really the whole overall three-dimensional structure of the entire protein. Okay, all proteins have primary, secondary, tertiary structure. Okay, every single protein has those three levels. Okay, and when you denature a protein, uh, you generally lose tertiary. Uh, you may lose a little bit of se secondary, but that secondary structure is usually pretty tight. Uh, primary structure, you're, you're not really going to break apart the, the amino acids when you just denature a protein, say, with uh, mild heat or with acid. Okay, some proteins will go on one more level of structure and have what we call quaternary structure, this fourth level. These proteins are made up of separate uh, subunits. Okay, they have more than one distinct protein chain. So in this case here, uh, we have the protein hemoglobin. And in hemoglobin, there are four protein chains. Okay, there's this one here, and another one just like it down here, the two blue ones. I believe those are the alpha chains. And then there's also two what we call beta chains. This one here in red, and this one down here. And each, those four subunits are, those are four separate protein chains. You can pull those apart, okay? And they, each of them have a separate primary, secondary, tertiary structure. But for the intact functional hemoglobin molecule, all four of those have to come together in order for it to successfully bind oxygen and perform its function. Okay, so that is protein structure. Okay, so for proteins, monomer, the amino acid structure, or I'm sorry, the function, um, pretty much everything in the cell, and definitely remember uh, the structural components, the primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary levels of structure. Okay, and our final molecule, uh, fats and lipids, sometimes referred to just as lipids. Uh, these are very unique molecules because um, they don't really follow all the rules that I set out at the beginning. Uh, first of all, they, they're not really made up of repeating monomer subunits. Okay, we can see when we look at a structure, we can see some smaller parts. Um, example here, we have this molecule glycerol, which is a very simple uh, three carbon alcohol molecule. Uh, if we add that to three uh, molecules of what we call fatty acids. Okay, fatty acids are these very long chain uh, hydrocarbons. Okay, you see lots of carbon, lots of hydrogen, and then at the end there's this this carboxylic group. Okay, that gives it the acidic property. Okay, so we take one glycerol, three fatty acids, do condensation reactions on them all, and we end up with this molecule down here called a triglyceride. Okay, you can see uh, this is the glycerol part here, and then down on this end, this, these are all the fatty acids. So three fatty acids gives you a triglyceride. Lipids are also unique in that they are the only molecule which is the only biological molecule which is hydrophobic. Okay, you think about fats, that makes sense. You know, oil and water don't mix uh, because they have all of these carbon-hydrogen bonds, very non-polar, so it's not going to get along well with po with water, which is a very polar uh, molecule, very polar solvent. So when we talk about different fats, uh, we can say that some fats are saturated fats. You've probably heard that. So what, what exactly does a sat what saturated mean? So if we look here, this, this is an example of a saturated fatty acid. Okay, And what saturated means is that every single carbon atom is bound to the next carbon atom in line by a single bond. So every single spot that could have a hydrogen has a hydrogen. So it's kind of saturated with hydrogen. So the, with these all being single bonds, remember that single bonds are very, uh, they, they can rotate very freely. Okay, so these uh, saturated fats, the, the fatty acids can move around a lot. That means that they can pack in together very, very closely. Okay, and when they pack in together very closely, that means that they are generally solid at room temperature. Okay, so most of the animal fats, like butter here, or bacon, 
Okay, these are saturated fats because the fatty acids are straight. They can line up nice and tight with each other. When the molecules are very close, that means that it is a solid. Okay, unsaturated fats, on the other hand, uh, have at least one, if not more, carbon-carbon double bonds. So there's a double bond. Looks like there's a double bond. And one more down here. So this one has three double bonds. When you introduce a, a double bond, okay, remember double bonds, carbons cannot rotate around that. So that puts uh, what's called a kink in the fatty acid chain. Okay, the molecule cannot rotate around these two carbons or these two or these two down here. Okay, so that means that the molecules can't pack as closely together in an unsaturated fat. The molecules stay a little bit further apart. That keeps these unsaturated fats liquid at room temperature. So most of the, the, the vegetable oils, olive oil, uh, peanut oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, whatever you know, liquid vegetable oil you want to think of, that is an unsaturated fat because of the carbon-carbon double bonds. Okay, one other very important type of fat or lipid are the phospholipids, okay? And these uh, phospholipids here, similar to the triglycerides that we talked about earlier, in that they have a glycerol molecule shown here. Uh, it's a little hard to see in this model, but trust me, that, that is a glycerol. Uh, but these only have two uh, fatty acid tails, okay? One, two. Uh, the third spot on the glycerol molecule is made up by this, uh, what's called the hydrophilic head, okay? It's a, it's a charged polar molecule. So that's hydrophilic up here at the head. Uh, down in the tails, these are hydrophobic. And so this molecule has both hydrophilic and hydrophobic re regions. Very important for the properties of the molecule uh, and also for the function. Okay, these phospholipids are found extensively in the cell membrane. In fact, the majority of the cell membrane is made up of these phospholipids, a, what's called a phospholipid bilayer. You can see a little bit of it here. Okay, with the, if, think of this blue stuff as the aqueous environment or the aqueous interior of a cell. The hydrophilic heads are gonna arrange themselves so they're facing out or in, as it, or, as it were, to the, to the polar, the aqueous region, and then the tails, the hydrophobic tails, are going to be sandwiched in between. And these phospholipids, if you treat them just, just the right way, they will spontaneously form this, uh, what's called a lipid bilayer, which makes up the majority of the cell membrane. Okay? And we'll talk much more about cell membranes uh, in the next unit. Okay. One more thing to mention with the lipids um, are these molecules here called steroids. They don't much look like the other lipids we were talking about. Uh, they don't, obviously they don't have any fatty acids. They don't have a glycerol molecule. Um, but they are linked, or I'm sorry, they are lumped in with the lipids just because they are also water insoluble. Uh, but steroids are very important. Lots of hormones are steroid based, okay, such as testosterone, the major male sex hormone. Okay, this is the basic structure here. Okay, it's actually based off of cholesterol, uh, which is another steroid type molecule. Uh, and all of the, the female sex hormones, all the estrogens, as an example, uh, estradiol, the female sex hormone, also uh, very closely related to testosterone, closely related to, um, to ch cholesterol. Okay, so these are lumped in with the lipids just because they are water insoluble. Okay, um, so what are the functions of lipids? I already mentioned one, uh, phospholipids found in the cell membrane. Uh, the, other, the other functions, uh, mainly for energy storage. Okay, because the fats are hydrophobic generally, and they exclude water, they can pack together very tightly, and it can be a very, very efficient way to store excess energy uh, for animals. Okay, so if you need to store a lot of energy, uh, you know, if you take in a lot of extra calories, your body will store all of that as fat. Okay, uh, it's also very good for insulation. Okay, think about like 
uh, Arctic animals, uh, the whales uh, that live in very, very cold water, they will have a very, very thick layer of blubber, it's called, and that, that's full of fatty tissue, and that insulates their bodies, helps keep their warmth in while they're swimming in the very, very cold water, okay? So lipids, remember, very different from, from the other molecules, don't really have monomer and polymer um, structures, but you, we, you can see glycerol and the fatty acids and the functions we just mentioned, cell membranes, energy storage, and insulation. All right, so that's biomolecules. Science like Galileo dropped the orange.